Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Hoyuk. Although I'm actually not sure I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's gonna be uh, Hayuk or something like that. I'm not really quite sure, but if I got it wrong, sorry about that. Still, what do we think? Well, actually Jen and I were surprised. We actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I was a little bit nervous because I had read online some people saying that it didn't really necessarily work that well with two players, but we thought it absolutely played great. And quite frankly, I mean, and all said and done, I mean, for us, this is kind of a Carcassonne killer, in all honesty, because it, it's so much more interesting what's going on. Obviously, because, you know, really, depending on how many blocks you create, that's like you're playing two or three or four instances of Carcassonne at one time, because you have each of these different areas where you're vying for supremacy, you're vying to have, you know, the, the most point scoring multiple times over the course of the game. And then you mix that with the fact that, you know, all your different Carcassonne boards that you've got spread all over the place are constantly getting shredded apart. You know, it's, it's unavoidable. You never really know for certain which one's going to get hit. So you always have to be, you, you have to have kind of like your main plan for, okay, um, you know, if, if, this is, if this is the one that gets hit, this is how it's going to work out for me. If this is the one that's going to get hit. And you always have to have like a primary plan and a fallback in case it doesn't work. Because you also have all these aspect cards that you're trying to save up to get points. But if you need to, you can trade them in early so that you can win majorities and hopefully get better aspect cards that will score you more points. Or stop your opponent from getting better aspect cards that will score more points. So there's, there's a lot of interesting tensions all over the place. You know, plus the notion of being able to build vertically, even if it's only, you know, just um, one story, uh, you know, becomes very, very interesting because you're, you're limited to where you can build. You, you can't build your interior buildings um, vertically like that. You have to build your exterior ones, and you know that that constant tension between trying, you know, using those disasters to break up your big, you know, your big blocks so you have multiple families so you can play more cards, but you want to keep your families together because there's a lot of points to be had at the end of the game for having the big scoring um, families. There's just a lot of really clever stuff going on and Jen and I found it worked great as a two-player game um, and really gave us a lot to think about. I mean, if we were to complain about anything at all, I would almost say it gives you too much to think about. Because on the surface, it seems like a, a fairly light game, but it's deceptively deep because there is so much to consider. You can see what cards your opponent has, and you're thinking of, okay, should I put this, this oven I can play? Should I put it in this block or this block? Well, I know that if I put it over here, I've got majority, but I can see my opponent has a, um, you know, ha, you know, has a, uh, a, an oven they could play. They've got two ovens. Are they willing to break that pair up so that they could, you know, take the uh, majority back here? Maybe I should put this thing here on a second story building, but then I'd have an even number of buildings, and if this place gets hit, I'd have to lose one of these buildings because I don't want to lose them because then I'd lose my pen. You know, there's just so much that goes on and you multiply that as, as the game goes on and there are more and more blocks in play, you multiply that complexity and it becomes a surprisingly rich game with a lot to think about. And that's just the basic game. Then you go on and you throw on, you know, the little addition, you know, and play it the full game where not only are you working about major worrying about majorities for ovens, pens, and shrines, but also the number of buildings you've got and the height of the buildings. Then you've got five different axes you are competing Competing against, you're competing with on you know a multiple number of blocks while also trying to do card management and family size management because it doesn't do you any good to have five of a kind so you can score 12 points unless you've got five separate families. And if you've got five small families, chances are your opponent has one has more really big families and they're going to make up those points lost at the end of the game. Really, really clever how everything works together. Like it a lot. And also, uh, I don't know much about it because I haven't actually seen the final Kickstarter project yet, but my understanding is that they are looking at um, introducing you know, several other elements to the game as well. Now, you'd have to go to the Kickstarter page and check that out because I haven't seen it yet. But I, um, I, you know, I think this game is rife for expansion, new ideas and whatnot. And like I said, I mean, for us, I don't know why we would ever play Carcassonne or vanilla Carcassonne again when we could play this because this one has so much more going on and really challenges us as gamers. And like I said, um, you know, uh, you know uh, surprising depth is really the keyword here. I did not expect it to you know, be as robust. And Jen and I definitely enjoyed our, our play of it. Or, um, or actually, I should say, you know, Jan and I have only played it once. I've actually played it probably like four or five times now, um, you know, just trying to learn the rules before I got, you know, because because I have to admit, the, the version I got, you know, not only is it just this rough print and play, but the rules, 
the original print and play rules have been changed in a lot of ways. In the original print and play, um, you could actually build up multiple stories, but there were these rules about how it had to be done in kind of a pyramid fashion. So originally I was trying to learn how to play those, but then I got updated rules because they've simplified and streamlined a lot of the game. It's a much more uh, clean playing game than the original version. This is really like, you know, a second iteration of it. And so then I had to start learning that. And then finally I got to the table and played with Jen and, you know, it just came alive. We really, really enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, I should say, you know, the rules might still be undergoing a little bit of flux at this point, but I'm, I think they're pretty well nailed. If I got anything wrong, it's probably because my um, I have a er, I have a rough draft of the rules, and they're still trying to clean those rules up and make some points a little bit more clear. But still, hopefully, even if I made a few mistakes here and there, you have a good idea of what this game you know looks and or not looks like, but it certainly feels like. As it's look, go to the Kickstarter page. I love the art for this game. It's even though I don't have a box, it's why I did this thing with the screen so you could at least see you know, the box cover, but the card art looks really great. It's, um, you know, it's language independent, you know, lots of really nice iconography. I think this game will have a really wonderful table presence, particularly the way it spreads out with all these different blocks and the way it builds vertically too. Really, really clever game, like it a lot. Um, really hope it succeeds on Kickstarter because I would like to get a full professional copy because honestly, playing with these little cheap pieces of paper is really kind of painful. I just want to have the tiles. I want to flip them when they're destroyed and be done with it. Uh, but otherwise, great, great game is Hoyak. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if I made any mistakes, please let me know. I'll add notes as always. But otherwise, I think I'm going to stop it right there and wish you all a very happy day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.